If there is one word that is often associated with the benefits of investing in crypto, that would be decentralization. You get to have a full experience of your benefits as an investor. Control will never be an issue. And financial independence is nothing from what we've seen in the conventional ways of trading financial instruments. However, the situation of decentralization in Bitcoin can only extend for longer before we come to a realization that it might not be as extensive as it appears to be. This begs to ask the question, in the grand scheme of things, is crypto truly offering a decentralized system? Thank you for watching Diversified Streams, your go-to YouTube channel for all things crypto and finance. Be sure to check out our community post about these subjects. We are curious to know your opinions on these matters. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest news and tips related to crypto. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you'll be updated with our latest videos. We frequently post so you wouldn't want to miss them. In today's video, we will be talking about the concerns regarding Ethereum becoming more centralized as the merge comes to an end. Everyone has hyped this event up so much and people are still pretty positive about it. But there is a lingering problem amid all this that Anthony DeLorio has decided to touch on centralization. We have a long video ahead, so let's get started. It's, it's significant and one of many steps that are needed to ensure the scalability of these technologies to take it beyond you know, a beta product or something that's 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 definitely revolutionary and groundbreaking and has the potential to create the change in so many different areas, but without it being robust enough and, and scalable enough and cheap to use uh, for the world uh, to, in order to compete with other technologies that are much more centralized, um, it's a big move. It is, to me, one of the most significant moves over the last few years. Uh, it is a major uh, accomplishment for the team of Ethereum and everybody to, to make that massive shift over from a very intensive uh, proof of work system to a proof of stake system. So it's something that got that recognition and, and it's got something that, that is groundbreaking, but it's also, and people should realize it doesn't solve maybe some problems that people might think still. It's still, there's still issues of the scalability. There's still other issues that are, that, that have to be uh, resolve. So it's it's a stepping stone, just like there's been many stepping stones along the way to get there and things have taken a lot longer than anticipated. But that's what happens when you're building these types of technologies. And um, it's very difficult to foresee how long things are going to take and, and challenges emerge. But um, I think uh, very proud for the, the for Ethereum as a whole and for the team behind it to take it where it is and to have the success of the merge happening. And uh, of course, really interesting auxiliary things that are coming out from that. But uh, overall, I, I, it worked out and it's where it should be. And uh, looking forward to the years to come when it will be more scalable and it will be something that uh, will accomplish the radical change that it's expected to do. Well, when it can scale more and when it has the ability to to use things like it's like right now, there's there's a lot of work being done on layer twos, which are technologies that sit on top of Ethereum in order to help with scalability. So there's different mechanisms and means to increase the scalability and also be able to drop down the, the price of transactions. But that's really the, the, the next big hurdle, I think, is, is how does it make, does the system become something that is useful, scalable, cheaper, and it really wasn't the intention of, of, of the, the, the merge. The merge was strictly about moving from one system of, to another and right. to, um, to, to remove what was initially thought about and still is debatable, uh, the, the potential limitations and, and downsides of proof of work systems, whether it be the consumption of energy or whether it be potential centralization of equipment that could be happening on, on that. So um, it, the new model is not perfect. There's people on both sides that believe that, that uh, you know, proof of work is the better way to do it. Proof of stake is the better way to do it. And um, each has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, so this merge was simply about making that change. And then in the future, as new technologies that are focused on scalability um, and making it in a way that will help reduce the cost. But at the same time, how are you incentivizing people to, that, are, that, are, that are involved in the processes as well has to be taken into consideration. It's not an easy feat. These are these are these are moving from centralized system to decentralized systems, and along the way, um, there are limitations that come. And Ethereum has always done, in my opinion, a good job of trying to really balance decentralization as the key aspect and not sacrificing decentralization. 
Um, but can it be done 100%? I'm not sure. From the short clip you've just watched, Anthony DeLorio talked about how there is some sort of disconnect with Ethereum's post-merge plans of achieving decentralization in its network, and the actual path it is going down into, which as of today, seems as though is leaning towards centralization. There was a comparison made between Bitcoin and Ethereum systems, where Anthony mentioned that Bitcoin's ASIC chips were the reason why only the most influential and rich get to take full advantage of the coin. But despite Ethereum's goal of dislodging from this similar behavior, the entrance of Lido makes it seem like they are doing otherwise. Anthony believes that there is a problem in Ethereum's policies and lack of validators in this space to keep the environment inclusive. You see investors coming in with a major thirst for profit, and with these money-hungry entities with so much power try to infiltrate the space, it is almost inevitable to see a display of power manipulation to assert one's dominance over the whole space. It is not every day that we see people speak of these deeply buried concerns in crypto, and they might actually be a bigger threat to the entire market than what we think. Do you think that the whole Ethereum network has not been true with its steps towards decentralization? No matter what your thoughts are, let us know in the comments by writing them down below in this video. Also, while you're at it, make sure that you have already given this video a like, and subscribe so you'll be a part of our growing community. It is also worth understanding that Anthony is not a full-blown hater of the centralized system in crypto. He believes that there are benefits to seeing both centralized and decentralized networks in the market, and it is something that we have seen in the internet's case. Although it was not initially marketed to be something that is centralized, further developments in Web3 have put up some certain limitations with respect to the user's freedom. It is nice to see a little bit of restriction with what they can do, as absolute power tends to be rather corruptive. So, it all boils down to finding the middle ground between centralization and decentralization, and just weighing down the possible benefits of having the interplay of both in the general crypto market. Aside from talking about what he believes is wrong with the steps undertaken by Ethereum to achieve decentralization, Anthony suggested that the solution for all this is to actually fulfill the lack of models that promote freedom for the users in a manner that genuinely allows them to exercise their rights. It is not a hasty generalization, but many models we see in this space nowadays are working in a manner that suppresses the rights of the users indirectly, making it seem like we are enjoying the full extent of our freedom of choice towards the many technologies working in the space. But there is always a trade-off that happens every time we emphasize these rights. And that is why there is some sort of push-and-pull movement when it comes to the plan of fully implementing a decentralized system in Ethereum. Anthony himself has been working on a solution to this concern, and that is through Andiami, which he defines as a combination of hardware, software principles, tools, processes, leadership, problem-solving, coming together to tackle what I see as one of the greatest risks in the technologies he's involved in, which is centralization. This software aims to make use of nodes to provide a more robust way of handling the different technologies we have in the space, and it is genuinely geared towards the creation of such nodes to help users get the most out of their trading experience. On the Ami hopes to be the only program needed in the space to assert their presence in the industry, without the need to rely on third-party institutions and be taken advantage of because they simply chose to trade with so much institutional trust. It is going to bring the plug-and-play mechanism we know of and technology into the system, offering not only a greater deal of convenience but also genuinely imposed user independence. It is a solution that banks on the concept of simplicity and fundamentals, one thing that you as an investor must know about. Fundamentals are very important when studying crypto, and when it comes to things like this, concerning the decentralization of the network, it is only right to look at the problem from the base level and see if it is something that requires recalibration rather than the imposition of more complex models. And that is it for today's video. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. As always, if you did, please show us some love and support by giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. And make sure to keep your notifications on so you will be updated whenever we post new videos on all things related to crypto. This has been Diversified Streams. Thank you so much for tuning in, and see you in our next video.